Hey everybody, welcome back. My name is Andrew Robinson. I am a recovering audiophile, and if this is your first time to my channel, welcome. Welcome to the place where we talk about hi-fi music, art, and design, but if you're one of the new members of this channel or one of our existing subscribers, you already knew that. So welcome back and how are you? Today we have a brand new review for you, a floor standing loudspeaker review at that, which we don't do a lot of those if you've watched this channel for any length of time. And today is something special because we are going to be looking at Yamo's C97 Mark II floor standing loudspeaker today. Let's get into it. The C97 Mark II is Yamo's flagship tower speaker, and it is part of their Concert 9 series. And in that series, you will find floor standing loudspeakers, bookshelves, center, surround channels, as well as subwoofers. And the Concert 9 series sits above the Studio Series, and the Studio Series is Yamo's entry-level line. Now, I have always liked the Studio Series or have been attracted to that series based almost entirely on its design aesthetic because it wasn't until recently did I actually get a chance to listen to them because we use them in our How to Set Up a Home Theater Guide, which you can check out in the description below but it was the Concert 9 series that Christy was attracted to when she saw them on Instagram. And because of what she saw on Instagram, that is why we are discussing them here today, because we originally wanted to use the Concert 9 series, specifically the C97 Mark II here, as part of an educational video between floor standing loudspeakers and bookshelf loudspeakers. But upon getting the C97s in this house, we discovered that they are remarkable sounding, and so we thought they deserved their very own review. And so that is what we are talking about today. Now, if you're a fan of this channel, you know we don't do a lot of deep dives into specifications because you don't listen to specs, you listen to music. But I do understand, specs are important, and many of you want to know the specifications of any product that we review, and loudspeakers are no different. So for those of you that want to know the ins and outs of the C97 Mark II, here are their specifications. Let's face it, a lot of loudspeakers, especially budget loudspeakers, the ones that the Yamo C97 Mark II would compete against, are drab for the most part. They are lifeless, soulless black boxes. Sure, they may sound good, but they lack that visual character. And I have got to tell you, the entire Concert 9 series, just like the Studio series under them, oozes character because while they are not necessarily made of unobtainium or from X material that you may find in higher end loudspeakers, they're made from the right materials where it counts. And the result is a very, very beautiful package that happens to also sound fantastic. Let's talk about how the C97 Mark II's sound. They sound surprisingly good. And I say the word surprisingly because I didn't have a lot of prior knowledge to Yamo's kind of house sound or signature sound, if you will. So I am basing my experience with the C97 Mark IIs, not so much on the Yamos that came before them, but just how they compare to other loudspeakers in their category. And I have to say, this is a loudspeaker that punches well above its weight class. And especially now that they are discounted, the C97s are borderline, if not the epitome of giant killers. And they are not neutral loudspeakers, but they are incredibly engaging and fun loudspeakers. And they do appear to be loudspeakers that are not picky about the type of associated equipment that you choose to use them with. For instance, they sound as good with, say, a Marantz receiver as they do with a Class D amplifier from the likes of XTZ. But they also pair very nicely with some vintage stuff and they also do play nice with some very high-end stuff, for instance, like the name Unity Atom, which is four or five times the C97 Mark II's asking price. For a loudspeaker that may not run in higher-end circles, this is a loudspeaker that can 
and does sound good with higher end gear, but also sounds equally impressive with entry level wares. And that is one of the C97 Mark II's strengths. They are not picky. And you know me, I like a loudspeaker that just kind of gets on with getting on. And, and I don't like a loudspeaker that requires a lot of fuss because frankly, I think there are a number of consumers out there and maybe even some of you watching this channel that while you may be into the hobby, you don't want to necessarily fall down a rabbit hole every single time in order to wring the most from any particular product. And the Yamo C97 Mark IIs are not like that. They are not neutral loudspeakers. I do want to point that out. They are not linear in their frequency response. There is definitely a little bit of an enhancement in the bass as well as in the high frequencies. Now the mid-range in comparison will then seem neutral or cool because the high frequencies have just a little bit of a tip up there and the bass itself also just a little bit tipped up. And this is fine. This is a common sort of practice among budget loudspeakers. And so it's not, I don't fault the Yamo C97 Mark II for it. And in all honesty, it results in a very engaging sound experience. But let's, let's break it down into its individual elements. In terms of bass, the C97 Mark II does rely on dual six inch woofers as well as a rear firing port in order to obtain its lowest reaches of its frequency response. And for what it is, for what it possesses, it is very good. At the furthest reaches of its capability, it does become a little bit one note. So if you want to flesh out say the bottom octaves with a little bit more texture and speed, you're gonna wanna do two things. You're gonna either wanna bring a little bit more power to the party, or you're gonna wanna cross these over with a subwoofer that enables them to go all the way down into the basement because where they kind of hit their limit, it's a bit of like a shelf. So they'll be tracking along and then when they hit their limit, it's their limit. It's not clipping, but it just, it has nothing more to give. And again, this isn't necessarily unique to the Yamo. This isn't necessarily a fault. It's just, it is what it is. But the bass the C97 Mark II does have from its limits on up to the mid-range is very articulate, dynamic, and wholly enjoyable. Now, like I said earlier, the mid-range itself is probably the more neutral aspect of this loudspeaker, but because it sits in the middle of a slightly ripened bass and a slightly tipped up treble, it might seem a little bit lean in comparison. But all that said, the presence that the C97 Mark II's mid-range possesses is awesome awesome and infectious and i it's my favorite part of this loudspeaker because the in-room presence the front of stage presence that the c97 mark ii exhibits is intoxicating and it really doesn't matter what type of music you choose to listen to obviously if you listen to music or movies with heavy vocals or dialogue tracks it, it, it makes you almost feel like a center speaker is present when there isn't one. That's how strong the center imaging and the dispersion of this loudspeaker is. But it just, it has a presence. And that presence is aided, no doubt, by the grounding brought by the bass. But it just has a sort of, not in your face, it's not shouty, it's not, you know, it's not forward. But it's just, it's there. It's there, it's palpable, it's dimensional, and I absolutely I'm here for it and love it. Now the high frequencies, again, like the bass, are a little bit tipped up, so they are a little sweeter. They have a little bit more extension, a little bit more presence than maybe some tweeters in this class. But for what the C97 Mark II has from its soft dome tweeter, it is supremely enjoyable and very, very natural in its presentation up and to a point. That point being at extremely high volumes, the high frequencies can become a little bit grainy and exhibit a bit more of sibilance. So while I have just described the individual kind of elements in its frequency response, I do want to make it abundantly clear that the C97 Mark II is an incredibly coherent loudspeaker from top to bottom. So while not neutral, there aren't any overt gaps between the bass and mid-range, mid-range and treble. So you do get a seamless sonic presentation. And speaking of seamless sonic presentations, the soundstage, the C97 Mark II has at its disposal is awesome. 
Awesome, awesome, awesome. I, about a month ago, or maybe even a little over a month ago, we reviewed the Focal Cora 806. And in that particular review, I mentioned that the 806 had a lateral dispersion that rivaled some of the best that I have ever encountered. Well, I am pleased to announce that the C97 Mark II is up to that same standard. In fact, I would even go so far as to say that the C97 Mark II has a better lateral dispersion than even the Cora, making it on par with some of the best that I have ever heard. Now the soundstage laterally from right to left is very, very wide, provided the recording you are choosing to listen to has it to give. The depth isn't as impressive. It's still there. There is notable depth here and it is very satisfying, but it by no means matches the width of the soundstage the C97s are capable of producing. The C97 Mark IIs arguably have the best center image that I've heard at or near this price point, and probably even several ticks above. So to sum it all up, the C97 Mark II are just, they're great speakers. They are. They are speakers that you can take seriously, but they don't demand that they have to be taken seriously. And that makes them great for music and movies because they are coherent from top to bottom. They are engaging through and through. Yes, so they're not the most neutral sounding loudspeaker. They're a little bit forward of neutral, but that gives them a presence that gives them a sound that makes you want to listen because it grabs you. It grabs you and it says, have a seat and enjoy the show. And that makes them very fun. And I, at the end of the day, like there are speakers that are very serious, capable tools, you know, but then there's speakers that are just fun and you listen to track after track after track, or you watch movie after movie after movie. The C97 Mark II are, they're that speaker. That's what they're for. They're for the person that wants to sit down and just enjoy themselves. And while they're enjoying themselves, they're treated to a performance that frankly is better than their asking price or their makeup would have you believe. So with all that said, what don't I like about them? For starters, they are a budget loudspeaker and that's not a dig. There are plenty of budget loudspeakers on the market today. And Yamo has chosen to spend their money wisely, that is in the drivers and the components that actually are going to produce the sound that you value. All that said, they have cut a few corners in the construction elsewhere on this particular loudspeaker, chiefly in kind of the QC or the fit and finish. This is a, this is a vinyl wrap speaker. It is not a veneer and so it is on the cheaper side. And when I talk about QC, I'm not talking about QC in terms of the electronics or the crossover inside, but more rather kind of the assembly. There are some gaps present here and they are noticeable, specifically the front baffle and how it attaches to the cabinet itself. There is a noticeable gap here. It does not seem to affect the sound. Like I said, the sound of the C97 Mark II is fantastic, but all that said, it's present, you can see it. It's even in Yamo's own press photos, let alone in this video. And it kind of bugs me. If you order these in black or cherry, the gaps between the front baffle and the cabinet itself likely won't be as noticeable, but on the white model, there's no getting away from it, it's present. And like I said, this is a vinyl wrap and for a vinyl wrap, it's not bad, is worth noting that the white wood vinyl wrap on these particular loudspeakers still would look good in a variety of living situations, specifically if you're into kind of that shabby chic, rustic, modern country, have more of a beachy vibe, this may be the finish that you are looking for. And for everyone else, there are the standard black and cherry uh, vinyl wraps as well. But I, do, I did wanna point out that because of its white on white finish, little things like panel gaps become a little bit more noticeable. Again, these gaps don't appear to affect the sound of the C97 Mark II in any way. It's just kind of a cosmetic thing that both Christy and I noticed straight away. Like I said earlier in my descriptions of their sound, when pushed hard, the high frequencies can exhibit a little bit of grain and excess sibilance. When I say pushed hard, I mean volumes in excess of 100 to 105 decibels. And for those of you that are like, oh, I listen at that volume all the time, 
understand that that's actually probably not the best thing for your hearing. And so I refer to anything over 100 decibels as high volumes because honestly, we don't want to listen for sustained periods of time at those levels because we could be causing damage to our hearing. But at those levels, the tweeter does exhibit a little bit of grain and a little bit of excess sibilance. But this isn't uncommon of a lot of loudspeakers at this price point. And conversely, down low in the bass department, yes, at the extreme, the bass can become a little bit one note. You can help this a little bit with your speaker placement, but honestly, I recommend adding a outboard subwoofer to the C97 Mark IIs if you wanna plunge the lowest octaves with the most finesse. Go ahead and cross them over somewhere between 50 and 80 hertz, it's your call. But by doing so, you will free up the lower octaves to be far more articulate than what the C97 Mark II can do on its own. But outside of those few caveats, that's really all that I found to fault with the C97 Mark II because on a whole, especially at this price point, they are hugely, hugely enjoyable and fantastic loudspeakers through and through. As for the types of loudspeakers the C97 Mark II compares or competes favorably with, I know earlier in this review I did mention the Focal Cora 806, and I know those are two-way bookshelf loudspeakers, but those at around $900 a pair have a lot more in common sonically with the C97 Mark IIs than I likely would have originally thought. The C97 Mark IIs play more full range than the Focal Coras. Obviously, we're talking about floor standing versus bookshelf here. But in terms of the sonic attributes, the dispersion, that center image, that strength, that presence that the Coras had, you will find it here also. In terms of how the C97 Mark IIs compare to other comparable floor standing loudspeakers, I kind of had to go back in my notes and look at some reviews of floor standing loudspeakers that I had done a little while ago because honestly, like I said, we don't review a lot of floor standing loudspeakers on this channel and the last tower loudspeaker that we had was the L800 from Polk Audio and frankly, these are not that and I'm not even going to mince words and say that the C97 Mark II is the same as that multi-thousand dollar loudspeaker. Now, personally, I prefer the sound of the C97 Mark II to that of the L800, but the L800 is capable of doing things that the C97 Mark II simply cannot. So for more apples to apples comparison, I actually would pit the C97 Mark IIs up against Monitor Audio's new Silver series in their two or 300 models. Now I reviewed those way back in 2019, not on this channel, but for another publication. While the Monitor Audio Silver Series 2 or 300 model may cost two or three times the C97 Mark II's asking price, that is the loudspeaker that I would compare the Yamo to. But I think you can get a sense by now that I'm a huge fan of the Yamo C97 Mark II because they are. They're just very likable loudspeakers. And in this day and age, I gravitate more towards those types of speakers because I want a speaker that just gets out of its own way. And I want a speaker that just sounds as good with music as it does with movies or vice versa, depending on what you prefer. And the C97 Mark II does that. And this is why I think since they've arrived, they have actually not rotated out of our main room, but for maybe an afternoon, because both Christy and I are completely and utterly in love with the things. And so I no doubt think that you likely would feel the same, which is why I give them my highest recommendation if you are looking for a floor standing loudspeaker added around this price point that can do music and movies with equal fervor. That's it, guys. That is my review of Yamo's C97 Mark II floor standing loudspeaker. What did you guys think? Is this one that you've had on your radar? And what other floor standing loudspeaker should I keep my eye on and hopefully review on this channel in 2020? Let me know down in the comments below. If you'd like to become a member of this channel, go ahead and click join next to the subscribe button. And speaking of subscribe, if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. It really does matter because Last week, we surpassed 50,000 subs, so thank you for that. Uh, be sure to follow me on Instagram, Recovering Audio File, and I think that's it, so let's wrap it up. 
Remember, the only person that has to like the sound of your system is you. So thank you so much for watching. Be well, everyone, and we'll see you on the next video. Bye. Hey, welcome. My name's Andrew. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how. I don't have like a, what's up? And I'm not gonna do that because I'm not that person. And. Couldn't you just pick up with what you I don't know what I've said anymore. So I have you to. You haven't said anything. I know, but. That wasn't, I don't know. What did you say a second ago? It sounded so much better. I know it did. I know it did. This is my problem. <laughs> I don't, I can't actually hear the words coming out of my mouth. <laughs>